Well, let, let me ask you, we, we did talk about the bass and a lot of things you got going on, but um, a lot of the bass players out there, even the guitar players, uh, want to hear about gear. You know, we know that you play the exotic bass. Um, what about amplification, cables, uh, uh, pedals, and things of that nature? I know tonight you're not using any pedals, you're plugged straight in. Do you ever use pedals when you're on tour? Every now and then, when I'm on tour, not yet, I, haven't, you know, I use them mainly in the studio and in, 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 in the house. Okay. Um, Pedals, you know, they do work sometimes. About the only thing I really like is an octaver mm -hmm. and a phaser. Uh oh, and a digital delay. <laughs> and the list keeps growing. <laughs> and I do like a chorus pedal. But I'm primarily a bass player. And my, all my concentration wants to go over here. Mm -hmm. You have to do a lot of thinking on what to press, what not to press, when to press it, and how to do it. Mm -hmm. And it changes the sound. I'm just a pure bass player that plays an electric bass. So I do like the pedals, but I don't. Um, um, I don't look to use them. So if you're on the road, it's just straight in. Unless I have a roadie. Okay. If I got tech help, I can have I can have everything I want. Okay. But okay. I don't want to carry it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't blame you. I don't want to carry it. Well, uh, what about amplification? What are you using today? All my career, just about that I can remember, I've been using GK, a GK 800, hmm. and uh, it does what it needs to do for me. And uh, with, ample, with, uh, with the speaker cabinets, mm -hmm. it's never really mattered as long as it has a horn in it. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been using bag in now for about 20 years. Mm -hmm. bag -in, uh cabinets works perfect for me. Two tens with a horn, you know, and it works perfectly for me. Mm -hmm. Quiet and music. I'm listening to the guys play downstairs, and I never play that loud. <laughs> I'm old fashioned, I never play <laughs> that loud. They're pretty loud downstairs, I can um, tell you. So I'm going to have to compete with that, but I think it'll be okay because yeah. I'm a different person. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. And everybody down there, I know, mm -hmm. and they are great bass players, by the way. Mm -hmm. They're great bass players. So I enjoy listening to uh, the younger, I thought mm -hmm. I'd never say that, the younger guys play. Yeah. But they're doing very, very well. And I got a homeboy down there, Doug Johns. Yeah. Great bass player. You know, but what he does, I can, I don't do that. I can't do it. Uh, yeah. And of course, Quentin. You know, the first time I saw Quentin play, I went to sleep. <laughs> I wanted to go to sleep. I said, how, and I even tried that. And to me, he is different. To be able to play like that, you haven't seen Quentin. You, you, you're missing it, you're up here. I think he's playing now, he plays the bass like this, like a violin. He holds it, he yeah. cradles it in his arm. He cradles it like plays. this, and he plays it ah, like this. Okay. Slaps it, plucks it, solos. He can play like this, but he's something else. We're talking to Spider Webb, drummer. Oh, we're talking about Spider Webb, Kenneth Rice. <laughs> many, many years, many, many years. It's so good to see you. I'm gonna say that until until I don't see you. <laughs> Harry Belafonte, Rita Franklin, King Curtis. So many sessions in New York and LA. I love you, dude. So many great years. We set Hollywood on fire. We sure did. We came out of New York and killed him. <laughs> we came out of New York and just, we, we, we killed him. We did. They didn't like us for that too, you know. <laughs> wow. Well, a lot, a, lot of, a lot of really interesting history and, and I appreciate hearing all those stories. You got a lot of miles on you, you know, been around a while. Uh, but again, just from uh, the exotic family, uh, just really appreciate uh, all the work that you've you've done with the Shio and on this base, and um, you know you, you look good. You look, your health is back. It seems. Man, I am. I would like for everybody to know. I was in such a dark place at one time. The universe is not through with me, and I don't mind saying it. I hope I don't overdo it. For three months, I was paralyzed. I could not talk at all, and I was determined to come back and play. And I did, you know. Uh, I've always taken very good care of myself. I've been very healthy except mm -hmm. high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm very fortunate to be here and it's great to see Spider. And, and I, I was very serious when I talked about Ralph Armstrong. I have seen a lot of upright players play. Who? Uh, Ralph Armstrong. Huh? <laughs> what are you messing with me, bro? <laughs> 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 I never played one of your bases. Yeah, you have. Yeah, I got video of it. You didn't send me one. Well, it, last year you played it. You didn't send him one. You didn't send me one. No, uh, uh, Ivan, he took it. He didn't send me one. You better talk to him. <laughs> okay. It's unofficial. 
But to get back where I was, I have been a, uh, I am a bass student. I've been playing for 51 years, and I'm a bass student. And whenever, and I can tell, I can tell who's up to a certain period of time. I listen to a record, I can tell you who the bass player was by touch and sound. Mm -hmm. I can tell you who the bass player wasn't, because uh, a lot of people claim things that they did not do. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the uh, upright yeah. bass, you know, I look at people like Edgar Meyer. The first time I saw him play. Mm -hmm. I was just so enthused with his touch and with what he did with the bow and how he played. Christian McBride just blew me away. I keep running into people. And I come out of New York watching people like Mil, Mil Hinton and George Vivier yeah. and Richard Davis. Yeah. And I'm telling you, people do not understand those were great, grand musicians. They were great. Right. Right. Mingus was so good that a lot of people didn't like him. He was so good because of the command over his bass. And I was alive to know these people personally, for them to know me, mm -hmm. and to watch them. I get a chance to come to Detroit and meet Ralph Armstrong. Brother man, I really enjoyed hearing you play. Thank you, sir. I so enjoyed hearing you play. That is such an honor coming from one of the masters. Because when I was a kid, I listened to everything you played on every record, every Quincy Jones. I said, Mama! I don't want to hear Chuck Brady. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boy, I get it when I get paid. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a pleasure, you know. Like I, uh, I'm a bass student, and I and I know a good musician when I hear one, especially if he's playing the bass. Yeah. And I don't play the upright. I've had one teacher that was Richard Davis, and he gave me one lesson. Actually, I had two. Bob Cranshaw also uh, had one lesson from Bob Cranshaw. Mm -hmm. um, and I take my head off. To a person that will carry that bass around and be respected. because you can't drop it, you can't bump into nothing with it. Yeah. You gotta take it, you can drop this, maybe. I know a fender you can drop, you know, but the, the taking care of it like it's a baby, like it's you know, a woman, like it's you know. Well, you, you mentioned the upright a couple of times. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it sounds like you're kind of an admirer of that, that instrument. Uh, would you play it on a CD, you think, in the future? Or? Not until I can play it. <laughs> now I can play a ballad. Yeah, I can play a ballad on it, but I've had no training on uh, fingering because I'm, I've used all four of my fingers, so I have uh, electric bass fingering, and mm -hmm. then I played guitar before the bass, so my fingering is in such a way. But I do, I can play it. Yeah, you know, I got an old K at home yeah. that I fool around with every now and then. Yeah, you know, uh, but it takes. That's what Slam Stewart played. And oh yes, yeah, he did. You're right about that. I and heard he, him live. Didn't have a microphone. Yeah, you got that right. Mm -hmm. so that bass. That bass probably cost two hundred dollars. Yeah. Big plywood sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, but uh, this is I was born and reared on this, mm -hmm. and um, one of the one of the records that I'm really proud of is uh, Lena Gabor, G Gabor Zabo and uh, Zabo Gabor. I forget which one comes first, and Lena Horn, mm -hmm. and the album is called Watch What Happens. Everybody thought it was Ray Brown until they read the liner notes. And I'm so proud of that record because it sounds just like an upright bass. Right, right. You know, and um, because I listen to upright players, you know. Um, but this is this is me right here. One day before I pad leave here and go home, I'll I'll, I'll do something with that with the with the, um, with the upright bass. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Well, we're at a point now where. Um, it's about time for you to go on stage, mm -hmm. and we'll probably get a little bit of footage out there. So, um, Bass World, keep track of Chuck Rainey through chuckrainey.com. You can certainly check out the videos on our website, and just be aware that, hey, the Chuck Rainey Bass uh, will be out hopefully in the near future. We'll in get the all the specs wrapped up, and then we'll, we'll go into production. And in Japan, y'all go to chuckrainey.jp. Check that out. Well, Mr. Ray, it's always it's been a pleasure this it's whole pleasure, weekend, pleasure and you, uh, the first time much. that we've really ever met, mm -hmm. I think, and uh, um, I've just I've just really 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 enjoyed it. Man, thank you very you much. Know? I appreciate. it. I'm glad to be here. So here we are, Detroit Bass Fest 2013. Probably uh, be back next year. Check us out then. In the meantime, go to exotic.us for more information on exotic effects and basses. See you soon.